Hi, I'm Cesar Santos. Unless you're in the nude, you're probably wearing something. So let's see how we can paint and interpret drapery by looking at some classical paintings. I'm here at the Frost Art Museum, which is located in Miami, Florida. It's part of Florida International University campus, and I'm really excited because normally they have contemporary art exhibiting here. Miami is known for Art Basel, the Art District, Wynwood, and even the museums carry a lot of contemporary art. But they have put together a show with paintings from the Ringling Museum. The show is about archetypal women that shaped some biblical stories. And you know my love for the female figure, for the female portraits. I'm gonna go in there and analyze them in person, walk through the gallery and see how we can detect uh, the technique and the elements used by the masters to control the viewer's emotions. Let's walk through the exhibition and see how they treated drapery, how they clothed the figure. Before you put clothes on, something has to be there to hold it, to wear it. And in art, it's a good idea if you have a sketch or a drawing representing the form that the drapery is going to be covering. Since drapery is soft, it hangs from specific points of support. And the specific lines, the folds, will show its direction. The way people dressed in classical times showed this tendency of drapery because they had to wear flowing clothes, like bigger baggy drapery to allow movement of the body. Nowadays, we have better technology, better materials that we can have something tight and still let us move around. So it's interesting to see how in classical paintings, the drapery was used as an element for design, but it was something that they were actually using. The Greek paintings had long flowing folds while the Gothic um, style had more angular way to, to represent the drapery. And in the Renaissance, they invented the way that um, drapery can fold and move around the form to represent the form underneath. So drapery is used as an artistic element, as a decorative element, and it has to be arranged with lines to create rhythm, distribution and subordination, grouping and balance, and playing all this in harmony. Details should be in relation to the big design. The bigger form should be the dominating element and the smaller form subordinate to that. Avoid meaningless zigzags or folds that doesn't contribute to this idea of the bigger feeling of the drapery. Every fold is different, whether it's zigzagging or it has more of a pipe, cylindrical uh, feeling to it. Is it a V-shape? Is it straight? Let's look around. Fabric has no form of its own and it's only dependent on what it's covering or on what it's laying on top of. With the drapery here, since it's meant to be feeling like it's floating, it has some elements that is avoiding this gravity pull. For instance, we see how the drapery is floating in the back. Normally, um, drapery is heavy and it falls down. And with the angel, we can see that around the back of him going higher up, almost lifting on the air. The same thing is happening over here with, uh, with the folds not being straight, not showing that weight of the drapery, being zigzaggy and flowy, having that sense of lifting up this figure. That is in contrast to the blue here. For instance, this drapery is represented as if it's on the ground. So we can see all this like kind of crumbling area uh, giving that sense of weight falling down. So we can see the application of both drapery being very different to create these different aspects of it. With the blue drapery, the form has been represented. We can almost see the two legs underneath that blue uh, color there. As well as the tension points, the support of the yellow drapery, it hangs and it moves around describing that female figure. As we see the folds covering the form, we see the inert aspect of this drapery just resting underneath, while around the, the sleeve, around the arm, we can see more of the spiraling elements and that gives the eye the sense of movement 
and you can follow it and enjoy it. The treatment of the lines is also added to, to say something about this type of drapery. And we can see that the yellow has this tendency of having straight lines. And that's important because in drapery, in nature, it has a lot of curvature, a lot of uh, soft feeling to it. And to represent it better is, good, is a good idea if we enhance this form by having straighter lines. And when we don't have that, we feel that the drapery is a little bit weaker. And that's what we have here. In contrast to these more flowing lines to give the sense of air, of flying. This is an interesting example because we can easily see the difference between the realistic boy having that drapery, showing the weight, the gravity pull, the tension points where it's hanging and all the lines moving from those points, while the angel representing more of that fantasy, the drapery surrounding him is totally the opposite of this to create a sense of difference between these two young individuals in two different places completely. So the drapery of the angel has these curves, has this uh, linear aspect that, the, the going against the pull of gravity, showing the air, the flying, the sense of lifting, the sense of other world. This combination, we see it playing together with her figure here, having um, her dress, falling um, under the naturalistic category, let's say, following her form, her legs are described, while also she's using and being part of this idealized flowing element. So the blue shows her, her lyrical movement, her, her angel aspect, while the rest of her dress keep her down to earth. These draperies were represented by glazing. So they had an underpainting that was lighter in value. And these bright colors of red, of yellow, were added on top very thinly, adding those glazes to keep the illusion of transparency as well as purity of color. Her hand is directing us to that tension point of suspension of the drapery. Every fold has a different length. And you can see that from that tension, all these folds are radiating, trying to bend towards the middle. All of them kind of bend towards the middle and they come back to the other point of support because that's what drapery is doing, is hanging from up there. And we have to represent that with lines. The red is divided into the top part, which has more of this tight feeling around her torso, more straight lines. And this middle section there of the red having more of these flowy, zigzagging lines in contrast to this broader attitude of the drapery here. So we can see three ways of representing it. Not only that, the red down here is um, giving that sense of weight by having these lines coming down all the way to the end and just having a little bit of a difference towards the bottom to create that movement, to not make it blocky. But definitely the lines were used to create this character of the folds and uh, the type of drapery that we have. We can see also the tension points where the drapery is hanging and it feels that this fabric is softer and that's why it's going down and up. The drapery here with the blue has the, the look of being unfinished or maybe the restorers took paint away from it because we can see the shadow at the bottom here, but it has this flat feeling and we can see that some of the value range is missing. I mean, it doesn't feel that it's going around the form. The folds are kind of um, stated there. So, I mean, this painting, I wouldn't call it a total masterpiece, and this can reflect that. The fabric here is not really representing the form of the foot correctly, and, and that creates a little bit of a confusion with the painting. Also, the brown here is not fully represented in terms of values or the folds. An example of drapery not being represented as well as other paintings where they really, really exploit that um, decorative um, attitude and feeling. This drapery here is the best drapery represented in this painting. And you can see how organically it has been represented with the half lock type of feeling with the folds coming down, mixing in the middle and then changing the directional tendency to go up.
for the support, where the support tension is. Today I'm just focusing on drapery, but if you want to see my take on composition throughout this exhibition, go to the link here and it will take you to that video. The treatment of the skirt here, I love how it's lost with the background. We can see that the value is integrated in the middle of her form and goes in and out, but the treatment of the cloth, of the fabric, of that drapery is not as, as, um, as exploited as the old masters did it with the folds, adding a little bit of the narrative. The fabric here, by having those parallel lines, doesn't feel as understood as the other paintings by the old masters. And it doesn't mean that this is not a masterpiece in itself. It could be, I'm just focusing on the idea of representing um, drapery, the cloth, and how it should or it was representing the thing underneath. And it's not just an element, optical element, to have a value just added to it. You can actually use it to enhance that decorative aspect of the painting. As written by George Bridgman in her book, I'll put it in the description below, drapery can be represented in seven different forms. The diaper type hanging here, the zigzagging type, the pipe idea, just round forms coming down, the spiraling aspect, the half lock, the drop type, just dropping, following that weight, and the inert, just resting on the bottom. Let's wrap this video up. Painting has different aspects. Some of them are clothes. Sometimes they move in spiral, sometimes they drop and fold.